and writer Tom Friedman. He's a foreign affairs columnist for the New York Times and author of many best-selling books, including Thank You for Being Late. Tom, your latest column for the New York Times is, Times is entitled Trump's Big Lie Devoured the GOP and now eyes are democracy. And in it, you write in part, quote, America's democracy is still in real danger. In fact, we are closer to a political civil war more than at any other time in our modern history. Today's seeming political calm is actually resting on a false bottom that we're at risk of crashing through at any moment. Under Trump's command and control from Mar-a-Lago and with the complicity of most of his party's leaders, that big lie that the greatest election in our history when more Republicans and Democrats voted than ever before in the midst of a pandemic must have been rigged because Trump lost, has metastasized. To be a leader in today's GOP, you either have to play dumb or be dumb on the central issue facing our republic, the integrity of our election. Unless more principled Republicans stand up for the truth about our last election, we're going to see exactly how a democracy dies. Or at least a political party. Well, I wouldn't keep it just to the party. I mean, if you have a press complicit in ignoring this and allowing these lies to promulgate, depending on the network, and you have a party that cannot lose its grip from this corrupt man, it is a democracy that's in jeopardy. So, so, so Tom Friedman, we've seen what's happened over the past week with Liz Cheney, with Mitt Romney, with these lifelong conservatives, these lifelong Republicans, because they will not join this personality cult. Uh, they are pushed to the sides of the Republican Party. And even more extreme people are, are at least people who used to be uh, Main Street Republicans, but now rush to power, are willing to grab that power, holding on to the biggest lie that we've had in this country for some time. Well, yeah, Joe, Mika, thank you for having me. You know, whenever people ask me how I feel these days, I, I answer uh, with an answer that may seem like I, I just learned English. And my answer, Joe, is country not right. Country not right. Our country's not right because we really hoped and, and thought maybe that um, what Biden was doing, getting the vaccine out, calming the, the waters on the surface at least, um, would make this big lie fade away. But what prompted me to write this column was the obvious fact that far from fading away, it's actually gained momentum. And it's gone not only wider but deeper down to the state local uh, level of the Republican Party to the point where you can no longer be elected to office as a Republican anywhere unless you sign on to this lie. Now that is bad enough, but when you then weaponize it by tying it to voter suppression initiatives in 40 plus states, you create the possibility that in 2022, 2024, that we could have minority rule. And when you do that, Joe, when you do that, you lay the foundations for civil war because if Republicans, based on a big lie, are able to change all these laws and suppress the vote so a minority can actually win in this country, um, I, I can tell you what will happen. Um, Democratic disenfranchised voters will not stand for that, and we will be in a real pickle. And so my bottom line is, folks, this is so much more serious a moment than you realize. We are setting the fuse to a civil war. This is not a test. Hey, Tom, it's Willie. Good to see you this morning. I mean, one of the reasons you go all the way past the Republican Party and talk about the dangers of our democracy is what you have fundamentally here is a group of people, a major political party, flatly not respecting the outcome of elections, which is the foundation of our democracy. So as you look out over the horizon, if in fact Liz Cheney is pushed to the side and the Republican Party makes this statement in the next few days that we are on the side of the big lie, what does that look like for elections to come? Well, you know, Willie, it's just so troubling that uh, to advance in the party, you basically have to now stand up and say two plus two equals five. Yeah. You have to say that um, Newtonian physics, the apple didn't fall from the tree. It jumped from the ground into the tree. And when you start telling lies that big, 
than at the core of your party. When you when you give someone like Elise Stefanik, when, when she is ready to take out a ladder and climb over, a ladder of lies, and climb over Liz Cheney with that ladder of lies, what, to get a job that pays $175,000 a year and free parking at National Airport? Not only shame on her, God saved me from ever wanting something so badly that I would so politically prostitute myself and, and give up sheer truth to climb over someone who has enormous courage here telling the truth. We all need to stand with Liz Cheney, with Mitt Romney, with Adam Kinzinger, because they're not just defending the Republican Party. They are the bulwark against what could really become serious political strife if they are meant to leverage this lie into voter suppression, into stealing an election. Then you really will have lit the fuse, I think, to this country. And, and Claire, it's a measure of how serious the problem is when Tom and we and others can only list really a small handful of Republicans speaking out. Liz Cheney, chief among them, Mitt Romney, Adam Kinzinger, a small handful of others. But as Tom writes in his piece, the truth has to come from within. The truth has to come from within the party, and those telling the truth are being pushed to the side. Yeah, and, and Tom, I am struck by the change in the Republican Party if you look at the way Kevin McCarthy is treating Liz Cheney versus Matt Gates, I mean, here you have a man where there's a written confession that he's paying underage women for sex. This was the party that used to lecture us about moral majority and, you know, the moral thing to do and, you know, family values. And yet they're protecting Matt Gates and going after Liz Cheney. Uh, is this lack of morality? In the Republican Party, something that you think has now become permanent, or is it fixable? You know, I, I don't think it's fixable, uh, Claire, as long as uh, Donald Trump is in charge of this party. That, um, to me, the what this party has to go through, and Democrats have gone off the jag in their history too, and had to go through. This party has to be in the wilderness for a while. It's got to lose one, two, three elections uh, in order to break this fever. That is necessary, it's not sufficient. The sufficient thing is to, to address the things that are um, uh, so agitating its white working class base that they are ready to follow this grifter and sit silent while they build a farrago of lies to really propel the party forward. So it's gotta be a twofer, but one thing I know for sure, Claire, this party, this Trump Republican party cannot be entrusted with power, not in the White House, because people who will lie this broadly and deeply, last time they barely gave up power, next time they will not. Tom, Michael Steele here. Uh, I, I wanna, wanna do the, the what I think is the hard thing, but it's the important thing. Let's set the party aside for a moment, and, and because it is, it is a cluster, you know what. What what opportunities do you see in a newly created space for uh, center right uh, individuals, independents, conservatives, to reformulate, terraform new ground uh, for um, a, a more vibrant political discourse and agenda, uh, and just sort of let the party sort of die on the vine and, and not waste any more energy trying to save that which does not want to be saved. Do you see a path forward where another track can be carved out um, and, and, and we can begin to move forward to avoid the very thing which I agree with you on with respect to the Civil War, whether it's political or actual uh, conflagration uh, among Americans over politics? You know, Michael, I still believe it's a very good question that this is basically a center-right, center-left country. Um, and uh, if you look at the last election, Democrats had a clear jo choice, you know, farther left, Bernie Sanders, uh, center left, Joe Biden. They, they overwhelmingly opted for the center left option. Until Republicans do the same, um, it, it's really hard to see how we make any sustainable progress. So this version of the Republican Party has got to fracture. It's got to fracture so it will lose power. It's got to lose power so it will finally sit down and reconstitute itself on the basis of center-right principles. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but I don't see any sustainable progress for the country. Great democracies are always ruled from the center. 
and the center left and the center right working together. And that's been true of our history. It's true of other countries. But it's gonna, it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, uh, and, and, and both parties are gonna have to deal with the fact that um, you know the, the, the center, the, the center right, the, the, the basis of the center right, the white working class voters uh, have been have been deeply agitated and disturbed and made vulnerable to this kind of message. And we have to attack that. We have to attack the basis of that as well as the political manifestation. Tom Friedman, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it.